và năm 2021 cũng được coi là năm thách thức kép đối với thế giới. Hội nghị COP26 tại Glasgow, Anh Quốc tháng 11 vừa qua đã là dấu mốc để các chính phủ, các thành phần của mọi nền kinh tế cùng ra tay hành động để bảo vệ hành tinh, bảo vệ sự sống và những thành quả cho chúng ta một uh, tương lai bền vững hơn. Và xin được kính mời quý vị cùng đến với phần chia sẻ của Đại sứ Vương quốc Anh tại Việt Nam, ngài Gareth Ward với nội dung kết quả của hội nghị COP26 và các cam kết. Xin trân trọng kính mời ngài. Kính thưa các quý vị đại biểu, uh, trước khi bắt đầu bài uh, phát biểu của mình về uh, kết quả của COP26 uh, hội nghị tại Glasgow, uh, cho phép tôi uh, nhắc đến uh, một thông tin tôi thấy uh, khá là thú vị. Uh, đây là uh, cách đây hai ngày uh, của công ty Lego của uh, Đan Mạch đã công báo họ sẽ uh, uh, đầu thơ uh, một tỷ đồng uh, một tỷ đô la Mỹ vào uh, Bình Dương uh, xây dựng một uh, nhà máy mới. Uh, vì sao uh, tôi thể uh, để là một uh, điều thú vị vì uh, uh, nhà đầu tư vào uh, Việt Nam không phải là uh, câu chuyện mới nhưng uh, lớn này uh, có hai lý do chính là uh, vì sao uh, 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 Lego uh, lựa chọn Việt Nam. Uh, lý do thứ nhất là uh, lý do uh, Bình thường là lý do uh, địa lý, uh, họ chở có một uh, nhà máy ở, ở châu Á và uh, thị trường ở châu Á đang uh, 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 mãn mẻ. Nhưng uh, lý do thứ hai, đây là và lý do uh, chính, đây là vấn đề giảm phát thải, có muốn uh, xây dựng một nhà máy uh, bằng không, uh, nghĩa là uh, phát thải nhà, uh, nhà kính uh, bằng không, và họ đã à, à, thỏa thuận với à, à, Bình Dương và, và, và à, chính phủ Việt Nam về vấn đề à, à, có một à, hợp đồng à, mua bán à, tiền trực tiếp, à, tiền mặt trời, à, à, tiền à, tái tạo. À, và à, à, vì sao đây là có ý nghĩa? Đấy, đấy là vì à, à, Thủ tướng uh, Phạm Minh Chính, Thủ tướng của Việt Nam ở uh, Vương quốc Anh uh, nói uh, như vậy. Uh, ông ấy nói rằng Việt Nam không thể đi nước lại với xu hướng uh, của thế giới. Uh, và uh, đây là uh, ý tưởng chính của bài phát biểu uh, hôm nay. So let me switch to English. Apologies if I talk to you with my Vietnamese there, but I'll now give you some more detail about the COP26 conference. Hello to uh, Dominic and Kyle, my good friends, and uh, and to uh, Mr. Pham Hong Sun and to all the members of BOID. It's a great privilege uh, to be speaking to you. So let me start with describing some of the uh, overall outcomes of COP26. I mean, before I do that, actually, let me say we were quite nervous in the run-up to COP26. There were a lot of reasons why the conference could have failed. The first uh, reason is a lack of attention. We just heard from Kyle how much the pandemic um, has been dominating policymakers' thinking for the last year. But uh, climate change, whilst a slightly more medium to long-term issue, is nevertheless a more serious one for the world. And, and uh, happily, we were able to get the attention of 196 countries to come to COP. Uh, secondly, was the issue of participation. Would we hear the voices of all countries? Because there are, of course, the big emitters. There are, of course, the, the fast-growing economies, the medium-sized economies. But there are also the small countries, who many of whom are uh, developing countries who suffer most from climate change. And we were able to hear from all voices. And, and finally, um, we were able to drive up ambition. And that is the key issue I want to talk about now. So on this slide, you'll see some of the uh, overall outcomes. First of all, from the perspective of government, we achieved the Glasgow Climate Pact. Science shows us that if we maintain global warming within 1.5 degrees of pre-industrial levels, then the effects will be manageable. If we go further than that, past two degrees, it will be catastrophic. And before COP, only 20% of the global economy was covered by net zero commitments. 
after COP26, uh, that's now gone up uh, to over 90%. And we also finalized the Paris rule book, which are the rules that were initiated in 2015, um, but were never signed off around transparency in methodology of, of monitoring and measuring uh, emissions and reductions, and also standards for carbon trading, which will be very important uh, for Vietnam. Thirdly, there was a strong signal about the energy transition away from coal towards renewables, and a strong commitment from the international community to increase finance to $100 billion per annum. And this is not the end of the process. Actually, we've increased the intensity of the process. So from now on, uh, every country will have to report annually on its nationally determined contributions, i.e. the targets it's setting to drive down emissions. But actually, uh, that set of government objectives, which are the ones that um, have been talked about most in, in the media, are uh, no more important um, than the commitments that were made by the private sector. So uh, I'd like to draw attention to the fact that uh, the Glasgow uh, Financial Alliance for Net Zero was launched with 450 financial institutions, 130 trillion of assets under management. There are now over a thousand businesses signed up to the Race to Zero, um, including uh, educational institutions and cities, including actually Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. Um, I cannot say that Vietnamese business has yet engaged very actively with the Net Zero campaign, but uh, it's good that Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City have signed up and, and I will want to follow that up with the governments of both city. There is also a move to standardize corporate sustainability reporting through the International Standards Board, which I think is very important for um, uh, any business that uh, is global, wants to attract global investment or, or work in global supply chains. And uh, there's a capital markets fund uplift, which is going to uh, bring forward $70 billion worth of new financing for clean energy. So those are, that's the overall picture of, of what came out of COP26. Let's drill down a bit into what this means for Vietnam. We have heard, and we saw in the video earlier, Prime Minister Chin making a strong commitment to a 2050 uh, net zero target. I think that was a bold and visionary statement. I know there was huge debate within the Vietnamese government about whether to take that level of ambition or not. But I really believe that this comes from an understanding that the, the factors that have driven growth in the Vietnamese economy for the last 20 years uh, will not be the same factors that, that drive growth in the next 20 or 30 years. And that's why I wanted to use that example of, of Lego um, and, and the sorts of FDI that will be coming into Vietnam. Then if we uh, follow some of the more specific commitments that were made, 133 countries uh, committed to a declaration on forests and land use. And Vietnam is a major forest nation, 47% uh, forested, uh, but only 1.8% of that as primary forest at the moment. So there's been a lot of deforestation. Uh, there will be um, a, a 1 billion tree planting uh, program in Vietnam, which we support. And there are moves to increase the sustainability of the timber industry here. But forests um, are key in the nature-based solutions to climate change. An example of how uh, carbon markets and uh, carbon offsetting can ally with reforestation is through the LEAF coalition, which Vietnam joined at COP, which is mobilizing uh, funding uh, to protect tropical and subtropical forests. And so by agreeing to transfer 5 million tons of carbon emissions to the LEAF uh, initiative, uh, Vietnam uh, gets $50 million worth of investment in reforestation projects. Very importantly, there was, for the first time ever, a specific commitment on methane, which is a particularly nasty greenhouse gas in terms of its effect on heating. And um, methane needs to be addressed quickest of all if we are to hit the targets. And um, something which I think bears, uh, bears repeating because it's not uh, present in the global discussion is how significant agriculture is in terms of methane uh, emissions. 
Um, so rice globally has the same emissions as aviation, 2.5% uh, of total emissions. And in Vietnam, 15% of emissions come from rice. So shift to low carbon rice and more um, carbon efficient agriculture in Vietnam will be a huge uh, important part of, of uh, the move to net zero. Most importantly of all uh, is the energy transition and Vietnam signed up to all elements of the global to clean power transition statement, uh, including uh, no new per permits and no new direct support for future coal. So uh, given that the average life expectancy of a coal fired power station is 27 years um, and Vietnam needs to get to net zero by 2050, um, uh, it's pretty clear that uh, Vietnam should not be building any new coal-fired power um, within the next few years. There are a couple of power stations under, under construction, but uh, after that, uh, there's really no room. And of course, that means there's uh, plenty of room for offshore wind, solar, um, waste to energy. Another dimension of the debate, which should not be forgotten, is that adaptation is equally important as mitigation for many countries. Uh, we will, uh, the, the, the climate has already warmed 1.2 degrees over pre-industrial levels and will certainly um, go higher than that in the coming years. And we already see those impacts in Vietnam, whether it's uh, through floods or, or um, uh, whether it's through uh, weather events or drought in the highlands. So there has been a big push to increase the amount of funding for vulnerable communities uh, to help their adaptation and resilience. And uh, there's a, a parallel push to increase the sustainability of food and agriculture, which relates a bit back to the methane points I was making earlier, but the benefits for overall uh, ecosystem integrity are huge. So, just want to give you a flavour of a few of the announcements that the UK made. Obviously, um, we are just one of the, um, the donors in the international climate, climate finance space. Uh, we work with many others like the World Bank, the ADB, the uh, IFC, um, as, uh, represented by Kyle here. Um, we are upping our investment in Vietnam into green infrastructure through the ADB, uh, into green bonds, through the private infrastructure development group uh, to offer uh, cheap borrowing uh, to Vietnamese companies to restructure in a green way and to resilience uh, to help water security and conserve biodiversity and support farmers. So I'd like to just um, uh, highlight that we are not finished as the presidency of COP. We are uh, in, in the presidency of, of the UN and FCCC, that's the UN framework on climate change for another year. So the UK will continue to take a high profile role in Vietnam on these issues. Uh, we will take a sectoral approach, focusing on Vietnam's en energy transition, but also advocating for change in energy efficiency, urban resilience, transport, agriculture and, and nature. We will seek a better balance of support for Vietnam between mitigation and adaptation uh, uh, to protect vulnerable communities. And most importantly for this grouping, um, we will uh, support access to climate finance from the public and private sectors. And we really um, call on all companies in Vietnam to think about what you can do, uh, partly to contribute to this national a renewal agenda, which Prime Minister Chin has set out, but also, and importantly, to protect yourselves uh, from future risk, business risk, uh, from uh, to make yourselves attractive to international uh, investment, uh, to continue uh, to allow Vietnam to be the uh, one of the factories of the world, with customers across the world believing in Vietnam as a clean and green. Uh, source of, of goods and services. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm really interested to listen to the, the rest of the event. Uh, many speakers here who, um, who I admire and uh, can see are making a huge impact on this agenda. Thank you for your attention. Vâng, xin được cảm ơn Ngài Gareth Walt, Đại sứ Vương quốc Anh tại Việt Nam.